First from Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. And from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. And from the first book of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And finally, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. May God bless the reading and the hearing of God's word. And our sermon hymn before Steve comes is For the Beauty of the Earth, verses 1 and 2. seemed at the time to be thousands of slides, and it was torture. And I hope I don't torture anybody with this presentation, but uh, we'll try to get through it. I have about 61 slides, but I'm going to try and go fast. And uh, if anybody's able to stay awake, there will be a surprise at the end. So we'll see how this goes. Um, and again, I thank you for the, for the support and the prayers that we received, the financial support, and for the opportunity to be here. So I think we're ready to go. Um, give me a minute. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, you're ready to go. Um, this was a me medical mission. My first medical mission, and we were in a, uh, a city of about 30,000 people, was our kind of our base for the actual mission activities. That was in Setipo in the Hunin province. <coughs> Uh, but we're going to start before that. The, the, the mission team was about a dozen people. I, I should say it was exactly 13 people. Uh, 
10 from the United States, and we had three local interpreters uh, from Peru. Uh, so this picture is a, a, our team arrived in Lima, and we were having dinner. We kind of trickled in. I was a leader of this, along with Jody Pratt and Lynette Jordan, of, of this particular mission. And Jody and I arrived on Wednesday, and Lynette arrived on Thursday. But the official kickoff for the mission was on Saturday. Uh, October 9th, and the picture on the, that you see on the right is our first team meeting. This was taken at the hotel we were staying in. Let's see if I get this thing going. And I said many of us arrived early. Uh, Jody and I were the first on site in Lima, and we arrived on the Wednesday prior to the Saturday kickoff with the whole team. But we, did, we were busy the, the few days we were there. We were sorting medications and vitamins and donations uh, that had been brought together. So there was a lot of preliminary work in Lima, separating and sorting stuff before we actually met initially as a team. Um, another picture of some of the medications. It's kind of interesting. Uh, Peru doesn't, they don't do prescription drugs. Everything's over the counter. Everything's over the counter in Peru. So we were able to buy all the prescription medications that we distributed in Peru at the pharmacies prior to the trip. Interestingly enough, they don't have a drug problem like we do here, so I don't know, I don't know what that says about their system. Initially when I heard that, I thought, well, how does that work? Anybody could walk in a drugstore and buy anything, but uh, it, it isn't an issue for them, and it helped us out. So on Saturday, we had our first kickoff team meeting. On Sunday, we flew to Mazamari, which is a small city that was about a 50-minute car ride to Satipo, where we were doing the mission. But we all felt God's hand was at work because this particular airport, it was a very small airport, had literally reopened the day before we needed to fly there. And if that wouldn't have been the case, we would have had to fly to, well, it's a name I can't pronounce anyway, but we would have been a seven-hour drive from Satipo. And it's a drive I had done on the planning trip. I had been there in August, and it was a brutal, brutal drive. So this really helped us out. Um, I said it was a small airport. The luggage carousel was a, a trailer behind a tractor, like a garden tractor. And everybody had to run home and find their bag. And, it was, uh, uh, and there's a note there. Well, oh, there it is. Yauya was a six-hour bus ride. If this airport hadn't been open, And one of the reasons for the success, uh, the local pastor, Pastor Mario, had done a tremendous job working with the local municipal authorities, the local medical providers to support our mission work. Uh, the, the municipality actually provided transportation for us from the airport to Satipo, and also from Satipo to the two remote sites that we serviced while we were there. And of course, on the right is a picture of all of us on the bus. Uh, all the luggage was on the roof. That made me a little nervous because it, it wasn't tethered very well, and uh, the roads were bumpy. We had a nice hotel. I, I had a picket on the planning trip, and I was pretty happy we found this place. But what I didn't know is that they would experience regular electrical outlets. And I mean, we were in the Highland Jungle. It was like 80 and 90 degrees without air conditioning for, for periods of time. Uh, that were surrounded, well, it was in the middle of a city, but there were residences nearby with roosters that crowed all night, and there were other maintenance issues. Some of us had water in the rooms and stuff, but it, it's, it was a good adventure. And all in all, it was, it was very nice. Uh, this was taken at the Methodist Church in Satipo. Uh, this was on our welcoming uh, ceremony in the evening. Um, a curious thing that happened, they had a special service for us. And this was on a travel day, it was on, on Sunday evening, the day we flew to uh, Mazamari. We got to the hotel about 4 and we were told to be at the church at 5.30 for this service, so we were warned to try and grab food wherever you can because sometimes their welcoming services can go on for a couple of hours. Mercifully, this one lasted about an hour, but during the service, all the lights went out, they lost power. And we were wondering where our next meal was going to come from. Uh, but we did find a restaurant that was able to serve us by candlelight, which was pretty neat. 
and, and it was very good food, I must say. And they did all the cooking over grills, open grills, it was delicious food. So that worked out very well. Um, so our first day of the actual clinic was on Monday, and we set up at the church at Satipo. It was a very, very nice facility for this mission. They had a very big courtyard uh, where they actually held some of their services, although they all had, also had a nave and a sanctuary next door. Um, I, I didn't explain. This presentation was actually put together by Jody Pratt, and it's one that she needed to submit to the, I think it's the North Central District of the United Methodist Church, which is in Ohio. And I, some of the slides, I would have chose different slides, but it's a, being lazy, I just decided to go with her PowerPoint, so that's what you're actually seeing here. But it jumps around a little bit. This is day two of the clinic. Um, that was at, well, it was in Rio Negro County. It was supposed to be at the Union United Methodist Church, La Union Methodist Church. And I'm sorry, in, in Peru, it's just the Methodist Church. It's not the United Methodist Church. But anyway, we, we uh, chose to go to this site. It was offered to us. It was actually a, a, an elementary school site. And uh, the church at uh, La Union didn't have any bathroom facilities, so we didn't think that would work out too well. Uh, this is Rhonda and Denise, a couple of the missionaries, so enjoying a cookie. And uh, here's some slides now from the actual mission activities. Uh, all the statistics come at the end of this presentation, but I believe we served a total of 315 patients during the course of the mission. And we had two nurse practitioners that were seeing patients. Uh, on the left is Sue, and on the right is Ruth. They were our two nurse practitioners. Um, this is the pharmacy. I spent a lot of time there sorting drugs and helping to distribute. And the nurse practitioners would come over with the patients and help guide us through what they, what they really needed. Um, traditionally, on every mission trip, you have one fun day where you do activities. Ours was on Wednesday. And we had to split up in two groups for transportation reasons. And one group was the trekkers, and they, they went on the longer treks. I, I kind of went with the group that went with the shorter treks, but we all visited waterfalls. Peru is a beautiful country. They have a lot of different uh, climates there. Uh, every climate, really, from <clears throat> desert to tropical rainforest, lowland jungle, highland jungle. Uh, I'll go through these pretty quickly. They're just group shots. Quite a climb for the trekkers. They, they visited five waterfalls during their day. Uh, we were at a cocoa, trans, uh, cocoa plantation, met the proprietor. He was able to split one of the, one of the beans open for us and we could taste it. Uh, and a wildlife sanctuary we visited. They called it a zoo, but it was actually a sanctuary. And here's some pictures of the group that I was with. Again, we visited waterfalls, and uh, I would go pick rocks. So then the clinic days three and four, I gotta find out where I am here. Um, this was again at uh, Rio Negro County. This was at the elementary school that the municipality had provided for us. Uh, many of the uh, medical issues in this area of Peru are related to parasites from the bad water to get in their digestive systems. Uh, I spoke about Pastor Mario just real briefly, his support. He had arranged for the municipality to bring us lunch. On some of the days, he had uh, arranged for the local hospital to provide people to do vaccinations for the local population while they were there. He had arranged for an optometrist, actually, to do eye examinations and, and make recommendations. Uh, so the support was excellent. Um, you can see uh, Sue Grigsby is treating a young boy there. She actually had a fashion a respirator out of a plastic cup because he was having some breathing difficulties. The slide on the right shows uh, Ruth, another nurse practitioner, is actually looking at an x-ray that one of the patients had brought in with them that they could review. Uh, 
holding it up to the light in an open field behind the mission. Um, this was interesting. This man came in, he had a very infected elbow. He had had an injury and had had, had surgery, but the sutures were all infected. And if you look closely, uh, the slide on the left, that's, well, Lynette Jordan, one of the team leaders, is holding a, a cell phone using the flashlight to provide light, while Ruth, one of the nurse practitioners, is cutting out the infected sutures. And they treated it with uh, disinfectant and, and gave him antibiotics. And he actually came back the next day, and it was remarkable, the, the difference we saw. Everybody brings their children, it's just wonderful because the, the, I don't know, Peruvian kids, this might be my imagination, but they, they always strike me as being very well behaved and very polite. And we were able to have them draw backpacks or these back bags, shoe bags, I guess you call them, uh, designs on them, and then we had them all line up for, for pictures. We distributed sunglasses for the kids. We had coloring books, a lot of Christian coloring books with little lessons. And well, the table on the right is the sunglasses and bras for adults. That's very popular uh, for the women that come to the mission. Uh, now we're already on day five. Uh, and on the left is Ruth and Liliana, one of our interpreters. And they are seeing a patient. And on the right is Sue Grigsby and Ada Ia, um, the interpreter, seeing a patient. Just a note about Ada Ia. That's a biblical name, by the way. I never knew that. It's, it's in the Old Testament somewhere. Uh, there's a woman named Ada Ia. She uh, spent a summer in Wisconsin with Lynette Jordan. Lynette is one of the co-leaders who lives in Slinger. And she's coming back next summer to get married up here. She met a guy in the United States. And they've done whatever is necessary. So she and her parents are going to be able to travel here. And she's going to get married. And plans to start a, a new life here in the United States. Uh, here's Jody and Rhonda at the, well, Rhonda's holding up a bra at the bra table there. We all always have to have a little fun. Just some more scenes of the children, and we always have two or three adults assigned to work with the kids on the coloring books and things. It's a very, very rewarding part of the mission for me. Uh, here's some more pictures of the children. And uh, that's Pastor Mario and his wife standing at the gate to uh, actually one of the work sites we were at. The other thing Pastor Mario had done is had banners prepared. If you look very closely in the upper left-hand corner, there's the cross and the flame. So well, I know you can't see it well on the slide. But, uh, and this is Liliana and Ruth on the left. And on the right, we have Pastor Mario and the two, two people on the very left are, are his parishioners, which he also had his church members providing support throughout the week which was very much appreciated. And that's Lynette Jordan and Ada Ia. Um, some more pictures. Uh, this is Pastor Mario's dog, Milo. And I'll tell you a story about a little misunderstanding. Um, I was talking to his wife and Petty Milo, and I used Google Translate, and I typed in, may I take him home with me? and showed her the translation, and she immediately shook her finger and said, no, no. Um, and I was explaining that to Pastor Mario, and I still had the message on my phone in Google Translate, and I showed it to him. And I noticed he got a little bit quiet, and then he quickly left, and I just went on to do other things. And about 20 minutes later, he came up to me with one of the parishioners who spoke English, and explain that they've arranged for a dog for me to take. Because he thought I was serious. <laughs> and uh, I'd love to have a dog, but I don't think my cat would put up with it. So. so here's the statistics. I won't go through all of this, but we saw, uh, I said 315, right, patients. Uh, 198 females, 117 males. The youngest was a 24-day-old healthy female baby. And that they bring her to our clinic is evidence that not everybody there has access to medical care. Generally, in Peru, the access is, is, is pretty good, but the quality of care is not always very good. 
the oldest was a 94-year-old lady with a headache. So, and it gives a breakdown uh, by day and by age there, but uh, very fulfilling. Here, uh, I mentioned the power outages. They were, sometimes they'd go out in the evening and it wouldn't come on in the morning, and I'll tell you, it got pretty warm <laughs> sleeping in those rooms and stuff. Uh, and then uh, intermittently during the day, and I was kidding, you know, I always carry a flashlight, and this is the one trip I forgot to pack the flashlight along, and the power went out. So we were in downtown Satipo, and I bought this little flashlight, and I explained, this will solve the electrical problem, guaranteed. And I'm not making this up. We never had another, <laughs> another outage after that. Um, and there's some, now here's kind of the, our whole team with the people, most of the people that helped us from the church in Satipo. Very, very welcoming congregation, very appreciative of our work. To the extent that I know consideration is being given to returning there in 2023. Uh, right now there's no plans for a Peruvian mission in 2022, but they're talking about going back in 2023. Uh, Oh, these are just random photos. Now, I have you know, the, the, uh, the vehicle on the right, it's a three-wheeler, like a motorcycle handlebars with two seats in the back, enclosed. And I had the pleasure of taking that to one of the work sites one morning. It was about a 35-minute, very bumpy ride, but uh, kept me awake. Most everybody else traveled on the bus that was provided by the municipality. Uh, one of the buses broke down, and that's why I ended up in a, in a scooter. This, I, I took this picture from my hotel room, actually, looking out over the mountains and, and the sky. Uh, well, some of our mission participants. The, as I said, this presentation, well, this one was on the back of the bulletin. This is the actual church at La Union, where originally they proposed that we do our work. And I should explain, uh, <laughs> on the planning trip I took in August, we visited visited two potential sites, and I actually had to decide where we were going to work. And one of the things going against this one was there, there were no bathroom facilities on it, which could have been a problem for our team. Uh, but then they were able to line up an elementary school. But it was, I guess the point I want to make is a very difficult decision because there was a great need in both areas. But uh, I, I felt justified when I saw the level of support we received here. This is Rio Negro, the, the local community near the La Union Church, um, and a group of our missionaries uh, spending time there on an off day. Here we are in Satipo. There is a river, Satipo River, and this was taken on the bridge. That's uh, Liliana and Sue and Ruth, the two nurse practitioners. And here we are at the hotel. I think both of these were taken at breakfast on different days before we started our work in the morning. Uh, the last day in Satipo, we had to attend a, a kind of a thank you church service, so we had to do a quick supper, and we ordered pizza, it was very good pizza, uh, with some of the other meals. As I said, Jody put together these slides. I always love ice cream wherever we go. Uh, This is in Satipo, some of the open air markets that they have. Very, very colorful. And I'll tell you, the tropical fruits are just delicious there in the food trays and stuff. Uh, but they have, I guess in China you'd call this a wet market. It's like 80 degrees and all the meters <coughs> just hanging kind of makes you wonder. And here we are back in Miraflores at the conclusion of the trip. And it's kind of sad because at the last days, people start going home and they start trickling out a couple at a time. Um, did I miss one? No. Again, a meal in Miraflores. Okay, so this, I want to explain this slide a little bit. These are friends of mine from Peru along with Lynette Jordan. And I know in the past I might have spoken about my friend Camila and her mother Jessica. Camila is on the left, and Jessica is the third from the left. They're mother and daughter. And Jessica's husband, Camila's father, Carlos, was a pastor that served two Methodist churches in Peru, in the Lima area. One was at Lurin, 
and one was at San Juanito. Well, sadly, he passed away. They, they all contracted COVID, and they, he needed an ICU bed, and they were all taken. He wasn't able to get one, and he passed away in April. So right now, uh, Jessica, his widow, is serving those two churches. She's also a support pastor in the Methodist Church. But these are my friends from Lima, and this is one of the reasons I go early to visit and spend time with them. Lynette Jordan, she was our disaster relief coordinator for the Wisconsin Conference for a period of time, and she lives in Slinger. She's been leading these missions for over 10 years now. Uh, Liliana was one of our interpreters, and, and that's me at, at the end of it. Um, now these slides were ones that Jody included. This is. Uh, Lynette's spending time with friends in Lima after the mission, and I was not uh, not involved in that. I did meet this young lady. She's actually a forensic pathologist. I was kind of intrigued by that. Uh, and there's more slides of uh, Lynette. And I should mention the slide on the right. That's Annie, and she is the lady that accompanied me on the planning trip in August. And uh, She's also been an interpreter on all of the previous trips. This year she wasn't able to make it. When I first met her in 2018, she was one of our interpreters. And at that time she was a full-time employee of the Methodist Church and worked for the bishop in Lima. Uh, she since has left and, and is now working at a university. And because of scheduling con conflicts, she wasn't able to join us on the mission trip, but she was my guide and partner on the planning trip. So, And I think we've come to the end of all these slides, and for those of you who are still awake, I said I had a surprise. And I talked to Pastor about this. I'm going to get a little personal now. But you thought it would be all right. Um, and I know you, you, I, I'm going to start by saying this has been a very rewarding trip. You've heard me say that before about every trip I've been on. But this one was especially so, for a couple of reasons actually. One reason is this is the first one that I was a co-leader on, so that was a great experience for me, and, and I learned a lot about leading a mission trip. Um, and also, the one I was given the opportunity to do the planning trip on, which I thought was a great opportunity, but it's also the one where I fell in love. <laughs> This is Liliana Graciela Lee. I, I first met Liliana in, I'm gonna go in 2019 on a previous trip. And she's been a good friend of Lynette Jordan's for many years. Um, and I so I spent a little time with her then in 2019. I was able to see her in on the planning trip in August, and she was one of our interpreters on um, this trip. So, uh, and it's something that just happened and uh, we feel very strongly about it. She's a very committed Christian and uh, if you think the name Liliana is pretty, uh, wait till you meet her. Um, <laughs> and I hope that can happen soon. I do plan on returning to Lima in March and we're going to be married. So please pray for us. And that, uh, our goal is to have her come to the United States and live with me here in Sheboygan Falls. She knows if necessary, I will move to Lima. <laughs> it would be not a bad place to retire, but the, the, we're going to work very hard to see if we can make the other thing happen. Uh, so, and that's that. Oh,